Hey everybody, uh, so in this video I'm going to demonstrate the process of installing a new bicycle chain with one of these quick links. Uh, most uh, chain manufacturers these days are going to supply these little quick links um, to join the chain together and you're still going to have to size the chain to fit the bike. Uh, but anyway, this is one of the little there's a SRAM quick link here. They're pretty simple. They're all pretty similar. You got a fixed pin there on one side, on that left hand side, and then on the right hand side you got a, a bigger hole with a you know on the outside edge of the link is a little tighter hole so those it pops right into place and securely holds that kind of keeps the chain joined together there. So um, I you know to to basically take these things apart you're gonna need a normally you'll need a chain tool there's some of the looser fitting ones you may not need them but more more of the recent stuff there it's they're getting tighter and tighter to uh, lock them in place or get them apart so you definitely would that's a handy tool to have uh, another thing most chain manufacturers I know Shimano and SRAM for sure recommend you only use these one time um, you know like you join the chain together and then if you take it apart you don't want to reuse it but I've had pretty decent luck reusing them two or three times on the same chain you don't want to use an old link on a new chain but usually two or three times I've, I haven't had much issues uh, so anyway installing a new chain as far as sizing it there's a couple ways you can do it uh, you can measure it to the old chain like say we were gonna take this old chain off and run a new one first I would put it in the small cog in the back small cog in the front combo and make sure it clears it's not sagging or anything and then put it up to the big chain ring in the front big cog in the back and make sure that there's not an excessive amount of uh, tightness there between the pulleys if that's the case then you can uh, just take that chain off lay it next to the new chain and um, just keep in mind that a, a new chain will be a little shorter because just due to wear on the old chain so just kind of you know think about that you know lining up the number of links not so much the length of the chain but it may be quarter inch to half inch shorter anyway this is just a big cog in the back big chain ring sizing method that I typically use on everything um, so here we basically want to shoot for overlapping between one inch and two inches so uh, that little diagram that was you know since we're using a quick link that's going to add another half inch so uh, where we cut it at that point um, you know basically that's what I want I, I'll just lay them over and look at that you, you want to have it at least at least one inch of overlap with the including the quick link so you know two rivets I guess um, so yeah that's what we did here uh, you can you know when in doubt cut it a little long if you're unsure go two rivet you know go two links longer and then you can test it by uh, putting it in that, running it through the rear derailleur. Make sure you go over that little nub. You know, you want to route your chain through the derailleur correctly. There shouldn't be anything rubbing. Um, you know, but I'll usually put it in the small, small combo and then just hold it together. And you should, it should pull that, uh, the derailleur pulleys down just a little so they're not rubbing up against each other. Uh, so anyway, I'm having it in the big ring here. Just initially, we're just going to set this, uh, the chain link, the power link, or the quick link there are going to lock it into place. So I usually just pedal it around till that quick link is on the top section where the, where the, uh, I don't know, pressure is on the chain. I'll hold the tire with one hand and just push down on the crank arm and lock it into place there. So that's what you would want to see in the big, big chain ring, big cog. You, you don't want that you know, derailleur to be binding up and then the small small combo you don't want that chain to be rubbing up against the guide pulley there uh, so yeah that's a it's a good link there uh, so anyway chain direction SRAM I don't think it makes any difference but this is a Shimano chain you can see there's text the writing on one side of the chain the other side is nice and smooth you always want to have that text facing outward so if you're looking at the bike at the drivetrain side you want to be able to read that text I guess and then also on these quick links you'll notice there's an arrow on SRAM here and on the Shimano so you want that arrow to be going in the direction of the chain travel uh, so 
I guess that you know looking at it from the outside looking in that fixed pin would be on the uh, leading edge side uh, the Whipperman Connex chains here, a little, they do it backwards, but you can only run them one way because they've got that kind of beveled edge there that goes into the chain rings. It's a little different, but um, as far as like the KMCs, they're the same as essentially as the Shimano and SRAM. So I, by default, I, I just kind of assume that Shimano and SRAM are going to do the most research and development and testing. So that's the way I just kind of follow with that direction. Uh, so... Anyway, hopefully you found this video informative, and um, yeah, please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber, and thanks for watching.